All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so today I am going to pick on this fellow right here. All right, but before I do that, I want to go over some of these comments. I really appreciate them. And uh, real quickly, uh, let me address a couple of them here. Daniel says, uh, you do not understand that is prophesied in part, Christ reign for a thousand years in, then after judgment, then David and Christ forever. I am David, you are so grumpy. All right, so I appreciate that comment right there. Um, so, if I understand you correctly, uh, Jesus Christ reigns for a thousand years, and then he, then he stops reigning. And then when he stops reigning, then the judgment of God, and then after the judgment of God, David and Christ forever. I, I don't understand. I, I can't even begin to understand that. But I appreciate the comment. Um, Jerfa says Jesus clearly states that no one will know the exact time of his return therefore we should remain in a state of anticipation and readiness God the Father has given Jesus authority to judge all of the nations of the earth hallelujah amen alright so very good that's exactly right exactly when Christ returns it's judgment day boom this guy gets it man good job stylish 101 too I appreciate that I mean that it it's so simple man it's unbelievable it's incredible amazing how simple it is and yet 99.9% .9 of the pastors preachers reverends today they all get it wrong it's incredible man it's nobody seeing this it's amazing I mean, <laughs> come on, man. Really? I, now, I suspect there's a whole bunch of double-minded, confused preachers out there that are saying, well, yeah, that's, it is Judgment Day. And then on the other hand, they will say, well, yeah, but Jesus reigns for a thousand years. And then they won't explain. They won't put any thought into what they're preaching. And so this is the basic question I have for you and for everybody. When Jesus returns, will there be unsaved people living after his return? You know, specifically for a thousand years. After Jesus. In other words, do unsaved people have another opportunity to be saved after Jesus returns and just be honest with yourself man that's all now obviously the Bible's very clear that it's the end of the world there is no more opportunity to be saved yet 99.9% .9 of all the preachers today teach as though they have another opportunity and why well half the reason is because of the Hollywood movie called Left Behind with Nicolas Cage. In that movie you see people disappear and then all the people on earth have another opportunity to be saved. And so they try to fit their Hollywood movie in as though it were Bible doctrine. And it's not. And it's cruel. Because the reality is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world. There is no more opportunity to be saved. All the unsaved people living today, their opportunity is right now. If they wait another day, they, that opportunity might be lost forever. All right, so it's important that we preach the judgment day so that everybody knows after the judgment when there's no more opportunity to be saved if you're gonna have any chance at all it's gotta be right now so take this 
serious. I gotta be careful because I'll I'll ramble and I'll rant on this for an hour if I, if I don't shut up. Okay. All right. So Mick Scorpio says Jesus is the sun returning every day in the sky. All right. So in other words, you have no idea what the Bible says. All right, Bab is Babinos, 8075. He says, you can't say that. <laughs> if you use the questionable astronomical symbolism of the Bible, will you say that the two fishermen were literally fish? Uh, there's a lot of, no offense, Babinos, but you seem to go on for a little bit here. And then McScorpio, he responds, fish in the Bible means the zodiac sign, pieces. I don't know what that word is. Like 12 decibels means the 12 zodiac signs. Tip to start with this video. All right, so we're going to... We're going to go after that video. We're going to examine that video. We're going to take a microscope and take a fine look at that video. You make the same mistake. Now, so normally, you've probably heard me in the past talk about Babi, Babas Babinos, 8075. And I have, you know, contended with him, if you will. Well, this time he's got it right. Well, to at least to a certain extent, I, I'm not sure what he's saying because I don't. It's a lot to read here, fella. Yeah, it's about the equivalent of uh, three books of the Bible, really. No, I'm just kidding around. I appreciate the comment. Uh, you make the same mistake again. I don't see your second comment for some reason. Yeah, because it, it had the link in it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I approved that link so he or anybody can see what he's sharing. Unfortunately for you, oh wait a second, what's this? Uh, fish might symbolize pieces, pish, pishes, pisses, pisses, I don't know what that word is, or the era of pisses because the Bible is great and who knows all its mysteries unfortunately for you the disciples of Jesus as well Jesus are historical persons I suggest the video 28 historical figures in the New Testament by useful charts so I'm not gonna look at that so you can apply symbolism in the non-physical but then but you okay thank you thank you appreciate that repent and trust in Jesus to be saved seek him and you will realize that he is or I'm sorry that he is he also is the God of this world and your creator that's right don't let nobody tell you that Satan is God of this world Satan is no God at all Satan is a God to them that are not saved to them that do not believe he is the God of their world. He's not the God of my world. In this world that we're in now, this is not my world. All right, so we we'll get into semantics and who cares. I jump around to, oh, that was yesterday. Yeah, I'm going to try uh, to keep that in mind. All right, and I appreciate that very much. I don't want to jump around and confuse people. I want to, all I, my intention is to connect the dots. And just, you know, like for example, Genesis 3 verse 15 is exactly what we're reading in Revelation 20 verse 9. Alright. So it, I'm just drawing the parallels when I do that. And now I know I get it. It becomes confusing. And what I, I highly suggest is if you're not sure, for example, what Genesis 3 says, then read it you know read it know the context try to do your best to understand the context of what is being written 
in that particular chapter or area of the Bible, what have you. Okay, it takes five minutes to read a chapter. But anyways, let's go back up to here to Mick Scorpio. He says that the fish in the Bible means the zodiac sign pisses. Whatever, like the twelve disciples. All right, so we're gonna look at this video <clears throat> by Eric Dubai. Now, I want to be uh, sensitive here, okay? Because I've I've been asked to try to be kind to these uh, false teachers, uh, these people that are getting it wrong and not pick on them but I have to pick on them I have to show the error and then show the truth it does no good to show the error without showing the simple truth and so that's my objective that's my goal to show the error and then show the truth alright now Eric Dubai is somebody I've known of for a long time and uh, he's been great as far as um, getting the conversation going regarding the flat earth or what I call the bumpy earth right and we're, we're not on a planet you want to get mad about that that's fine Eric Dubai he he gets it or maybe he just thought this was a you know a great uh, trend a great new trend and, and jumped on board I don't know but he did come to me privately and asked me or he, it was in the comment section doesn't matter same and asked me if he could use my material and I I for sure said please do and boy did he ever and he really got the conversation going and I appreciate that what I don't appreciate is him lying about the Word of God and so he's not doing it on purpose right he's not it's not like Eric knows the truth and he's deliberately lying to people he honestly believes the nonsense that he preaches so I want to get into what he preaches and I don't want to I don't want you to think I'm picking on him as an individual you know but I'm gonna pick on what he teaches alright because what he teaches is it's not his own teaching right it and there are a lot of people that are teaching the same thing that he's teaching and so I wanna shine some light on this nonsense here and then just very simply show you the truth and show you that the truth is in the Bible and it's always been right there in the Bible and I'm telling you when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven the truth is gonna play out just as it says uh, just as it said the whole time in the Bible and <laughs> it's amazing it's amazing really to see so many people get it wrong thinking that they're smart when the whole time we're all just a bunch of dummies that's the truth and the Bible the Word of God is right it's always been right okay all right let's see let's go excuse me uh, let's go here as someone who has attended church since before I could walk in a family comprised entirely of devout Christians all right so to summarize here I want to I'm gonna pick on him a little bit here all right, he, this is a great man he's got 200,000 nearly 200,000 subscribers this particular video has over 200,000 views this guy makes one video that is seen by more people in one day than all of my videos have ever been seen probably pretty close to this guy's super popular I'm nobody keep that in mind okay before you get too mad at me 
And I know you're going to get mad at me because you guys love Eric Dubai, and that's great. But I want you to consider this. He's claiming authority because when he was a snot-nosed little brat, he went to church. So now he is the authority on the Word of God. All right, that's the presentation that he wants to, that's the foundation for what he wants to set as he gets into whatever nonsense he's preaching. And having read the Bible cover to cover, it has become increasingly clear to me that these holy scriptures were meant to be taken symbolically, not literally or historically. Things like talking snakes and bushes, virgins giving birth, eating the body of Christ, staffs turning into serpents, and many other biblical miracles are all actually ancient spiritual symbolisms found in many cultures and traditions around the world thousands of years older than the Bible referring to psychological phenomena, not historical events. Okay, we look at the Old Testament. We look at the stories of Abraham and all of the crazy things in the Old Testament. Oceans opened up, fish swallow people, lady cut somebody's hair and he gets, all this crazy stuff goes on. The Apostle Paul speaks concerning that on page 953. The rest of you look at Galatians chapter 4, page 953. Galatians chapter 4. What does the Apostle Paul say about this old... I mean, you... Come on. You had stories of a, of a whale swallowing a guy. The whale pukes and... Then a yeah, okay. Hold on a second. I want to go back to Galatians. The rest of you look at... Nope. Galatians chapter 4, page 953. Galatians... <laughs> the page number is irrelevant. Galatians chapter 4. Alright, Galatians chapter 4. I wonder what it says. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is the, a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Now, I'm quite certain he's going to ignore that. Galatians chapter 4. What does the Apostle Paul say about this old... I mean, you... Come on. You had stories of a, of a whale swallowing a guy. The whale pukes and an evangelist comes out. And I mean, you've read... And it's, I tell you, <laughs> that's okay. And then you get up and sing a song. Amazing. And all of this stuff. <coughs> you have stories about two naked people running around in the Garden of Eden, they call it. And they don't know they don't have any clothes on until a talking snake comes along and says... Hey, what's that there? I don't think you got your shorts on. And it's like... All right. Um, so, uh, this, to me, this guy looks like he wants to be... Rodney Dangerfield. All right. He thinks he's funny. And maybe he is funny to somebody. Uh, but this is no laughing matter. Now I want you to hear what he just said. It's about two naked people running around in the Garden of Eden, they call it, and they don't know they don't have any clothes on until a talking snake comes along and say, Hey, what's that there? I don't think you got your shorts on. It. Okay, hey, what's that you got there? I don't think you got your shorts on. So if I were to go to the, type this into the search bar, the, the serpent never said that. That's not in the Bible. Anywhere. Now this guy, he, he, he doesn't know what the Bible says. That's pretty apparent right there with that statement right there. Because the Bible never says that. And I want you to consider something here. In the, the last days, in the last time, there shall be mockers who should walk after their own ungodly lust in the last days knowing this first that there should there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and that's exactly what we're seeing today in abundance more so 
today than ever before. Now, in Genesis 3, now th this is nothing to be taken lightly. I mean, if you're going to make the claim, it better be true, or you're going to be found a liar. And, you know, I take this stuff very serious. Proverbs 30, verse 6, Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. And this guy here? And he clothes about two naked people running around in the Garden of Eden, they call it, and they don't know they don't have any clothes on until a talking snake comes along and says, Hey, what's that there? I don't think you got your shorts on. It. Uh, that's funny. That's real funny to somebody. But it's not funny to me. All right, so in the Genesis chapter 3 we know that the serpent beguiles Eve and tricks her into eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil alright and what I always point to is this statement right up here at the very beginning of chapter 3 when the serpent says to the woman yea has God said question mark see the serpent is getting Eve to doubt the word of God and so therefore she ponders it and thinks okay I'll eat it and then of course Adam also eats of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and if you've read this at, you know <laughs> at least one time you know like Eric Dubai said as someone who attended church since before I could walk in a family comprised entirely of devout Christians and having read the Bible cover to cover and well, how do you miss this, man? You claim to be an expert and to have all this knowledge. And one of the very first things that you show, we're not even two minutes into this sucker. We're not even two minutes into this video, and you already show something that is obviously an error. Now, if this don't matter, nothing matters. Did the serpent say, Hey, 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 you got no shorts on. <laughs> no. The serpent doesn't say that at all. This is not a laughing matter. It's not something just a... I mean, we're not just playing games here, fella. Yeah, I'm going to show you. I'm going to get into that, the seriousness of this. But I want to show you here, you'll notice, hey, it takes five minutes to read Genesis 3. You, you'll spend 45 minutes watching Netflix series. You can't take five minutes to read a chapter. You even said yourself that you grew up in the church. You're an expert. You read the Bible cover to cover before you can even walk maybe that's the problem and he said who told you thee that thou was naked Did, who said that the serpent that's okay and then you get up and sing a song amazing and all of this stuff you have stories about two naked people running around in the garden of eden they call it and they don't know they don't have any clothes on until a talking snake comes along and they don't know they don't have any clothes on until a talking snake. So is God a talking snake? Isn't that what he's saying? To him? 
God is a talking snake. Isn't that what he's revealing? Because who says this? And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Well, so nobody told Adam and Eve that they were naked. When they ate, their eyes were opened and they could see that they were naked because they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and that's how they knew they were naked they didn't have a they didn't need a serpent to come tell them that they were naked and God said who told you that thou was naked? Because the only way for them to know that they were naked is if somebody told them. But nobody told them. The only way then, once you eliminated, once you eliminated that possibility, then you must conclude that, hey, well, there's only one other possibility. And that is if they had eyes to see and the only way they can have eyes to see is that they eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil which they were commanded not to do but they did it both Eve and Adam all right and then so I mean the, the serpent beguiled her right got her to doubt the Word of God to uh, got her to doubt the commandment of God and she did it and we see the serpent beguiling Eve even today right but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ and uh, you've heard me day after day telling you the stuff is simple once your eyes are open and the only way for your eyes to be open is if you have faith so the key to understanding the Bible is faith the key to understanding the Bible's hidden meanings is faith and without faith, what happens? What happens? What's the Bible say? Isaiah 66, verse 4, I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. God is going to choose your delusions. You're going to be delusional if you don't have faith. And that's obvious. It's obvious when you see Eric Dubai uh, exalting himself and then sharing a, well, I don't know, a clip of this guy. What's he going on for 20 minutes here? This guy who has absolutely no idea what the Bible says. And he, and he adds to the Bible so much that he's found, he's been found a liar. And we're not even two minutes into this video. Now, if he's going to lie within the first two minutes, how many more lies do you imagine is spread out all throughout this Bible? Lie after lie. Right, if you're going to tell the truth, buddy, you better not be telling the lies. You start off a video with a lie, then you ruin the whole video. You ruined your message. Now the Bible, the King James Bible has zero lies, zero errors, zero contradictions. It is the perfect, pure Word of God directly from God to us. It's not man's interpretation. It's not man's translation. 
it is the Word of God directly from God all right so let's get into this a little bit all right two things Jesus says the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life all right the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life so the word is from heaven the word is not from man right and we've read this um, came not from the will of the word of God the prophecy of old came not from the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost so the word of God the prophecy came by the Holy Ghost the Spirit of God All right, I want you to consider this now let's see if we can find a verse for the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart there's nothing like the Bible nothing on earth compares to the Bible now I want you to to seriously consider this piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit now if you're not a believer if you don't believe the Bible you don't believe what well, you know if you believe in Eric Dubai whatever you believe in anything and everything but the Lord Jesus Christ and the perfect pure Word of God then think about this meditate on this piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit what is soul and what is spirit all right identify the difference between soul and spirit and then think what would what does this mean the Word of God pierces to the dividing asunder dividing the soul and the spirit what's that mean and I want you to ponder that to meditate on it and to think about it uh, I guess whether you're a believer or not a believer but this is powerful stuff the Bible is the Word of God and the Bible is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart it knows it knows what you're thinking because it's from God it is a the spirit of God it is God there's no book like it not even close John chapter 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God you understand what that means the Word of God is God now consider this that man cannot live on bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live Deuteronomy 8 
echoed again here by our Lord Jesus Christ when he says, but he answered and said, it is written. Why does he say it's written? Because it was written in Deuteronomy 8. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, if we can't live on bread alone, and if we have to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, then where can we find every word that comes from the mouth of God? It's echoed again here in Luke chapter 4 verse 4 and he answered saying it is written that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of God All right, so the, the word of God has to be perfect it has to be and if you have a Bible that's not perfect then you don't have the book of the Lord the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of earth purified seven times thou shalt keep them O Lord thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever see the Word of God transcends all languages for all time forever and ever Psalm 119 thy word is very pure therefore thy servant loveth it Proverbs 30 verse 5 every word of God is pure he is a shield unto them that put their trust in him it's important to understand that the Bible the King James Bible is the pure Word of God the Word of God transcends all languages for all time forever and ever let's go to 1 Corinthians 14 and the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people and yet for all that will they not hear me saith the Lord now sometimes I think this verse here goes in a lot of people it goes into the one ear and, and then it goes right out the other ear I don't know how in the world do you read this verse and not take it serious but I think a lot of people want to willingly ignore this because it destroys their worldview that you have to depend on scholars and experts to tell them what God says you gotta learn five different languages to know what God says well no no you don't all you have to do is believe the Bible that you hold in your hands believe it is from God that's the mystery that's the hidden meanings that's the hidden meanings. that's the secret man that's the mystery there's nothing like the Bible on earth there's one requirement though you must believe you must believe even this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart that means they can't understand what the Bible says Right, and that's then that's why you, you get these clowns mocking and scoffing the word of God more so today than ever before the veil is upon their heart why because they do not believe they don't have faith in the Bible that they hold in their hands nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away right and now their eyes will be opened now if you're a believer you know this for absolute fact that once you were born of God then your eyes 
were opened. You know, you ought to know that. It should be. I mean, how do you convey that to a, to an unsaved person? I, I don't know. All you can do is preach the truth, plant the seeds of truth, and trust God to um, lead those that that desire the truth. Right? There's, you know, you can't put your hands around their neck and say, "Put these glasses on." Right? You just got to plant seeds of truth and uh, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ the good news that he has come to save us out of this to deliver us out of this wicked world to save us from the second death to give us everlasting life a life where there is no sin right so I want you to you know you've probably seen these verses all throughout the Bible where it says um, you know they have ears and they, but they don't hear they got eyes and they don't see what is that anybody know what verse that is here here Isaiah 6 make the heart of this people fat make their eye I'm sorry make their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed see this is the mystery of the hidden meanings in the Bible the mystery is faith it's always been about faith the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints of morrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart see it's always been about faith from the beginning to the end it's always been about faith and <laughs> I really these people that claim Oh, I read the Bible when I was a snot-nosed little brat. I know exactly what it says. No, you don't. You don't have any idea what it says because you don't believe. You you can read the Bible cover to cover every single day, but without faith, you won't understand a single word of it. Now, here in Hebrews 11, to me, it's one of the most amazing chapters it's a great they're all great but this is really great because it talks about the importance of faith and then it gives us sort of a rundown throughout history so a lot can be absorbed and learned just by reading Hebrews 11 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now this goes down from all the way from Cain and Abel, right? Enoch and Noah, Abraham, Sarah, right? I mean just on and on and on all throughout sort of you know all throughout the history leading up to Christ and obviously is applicable to today it's amazing and these all having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect pretty amazing stuff the importance of faith now we see this echoed all throughout the Bible from Isaiah and then into the New Testament for this people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed why because they don't believe they don't have faith 
lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. See the importance of faith. It's the importance of the Word of God and the importance of faith. If you don't believe in the Word of God, you don't have faith. Right. Now, uh, there's more I, I could get into. I, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause this for a second. I'm gonna go over here. And there was something I wanted to touch before I ended this video. And so, bear with me one second. Um, if you if you read this, you'll notice that. He basically admits he doesn't believe anything in the Bible. Right? Um, okay, here we go. Second Corinthians three verse six clearly says the scripture should not be read literally. I mean, he talk about not having any understanding whatsoever. This is evidenced here, and then by Eric Debye's own words. Uh, he doesn't say, not only does he not say, you know, you shouldn't believe anything in the Bible, you shouldn't even read it. Right, and this is the same thing that we're seeing here in Genesis 3. Yea, has God said. So also, Eric Tobias is saying, ah, don't, yea, has God said, don't take it literally. When God told Adam and Eve he literally told them do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and they did eat now in 2nd Corinthians verse or I'm sorry 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 let me just read a little bit here what six six verses now, let me read again. Think about what he's saying here. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 6, clearly says the scriptures should not be read literally. And, of course, he's lying because the, it doesn't say that at all. It doesn't imply that at all. And he's adding to the word of God, and he's going to be found a liar. Let me read for you. Do we begin again to command... Uh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Do we begin again to commend ourselves? Or need we, as some others, epistles of commendation... Am I saying that word right? Commend... Oh, boy. See, I don't know English very well. And then you want me to learn four different languages? Five different Commendation. 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 I can't. Commendation. Commendation. Okay. Forgive me. <laughs> Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some others, epistles of commendation? Commend. I still can't say that word. For dog says commendation. 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 Accommodation. <laughs> to me, it, it doesn't square with what my eyes are seeing here. Accommodation. I'll just say accommodation. All right. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some others, epistles of accommodation to you, or letter, letters of accommodation from you? Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. Now, did you get that? Was that too hard for you to understand? Think about what is the writer talking about. 
Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some others, epistles of commendation to you, or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistle written in our hearts. Ye are our epistle written in our hearts. Known and read of all men, for as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to God word, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives life. Now, I, I certainly can see how a non-believer cannot understand this. I, I get it. If you don't believe, of course, it's a mystery to you, and you're not going to see it, and you're not going to understand. But um, when you are a believer, um, then uh, your eyes are open, and you should be able to see this. All right, first, I'm sorry, John chapter one: For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Right, so the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives life. You know, the letter of the law condemns us, right? Because we're all guilty before God. But the Spirit, which comes from Jesus, gives us life. So that God does not impute sin on those of us that are his elect all right so there's nothing here to suggest that don't read the Bible I mean, that would be nonsensical just from a logical standpoint you have a book that says don't read this book it's non sensical now think about this faith comes by hearing right and that's that's the most important part really for you and I is to have faith without faith we're in big trouble <laughs> right so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So we are called to preach the gospel to every creature, right? Preach the gospel to every creature. In fact, um, several times I, you know, I've, I've shown you that we are a kingdom of priests, all right? We're called to preach the gospel to every creature. All right, many times throughout the Bible, even in Exodus 19, God says, "Ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation." Right in First Peter chapter two, He says, "We are a royal priesthood," and of course in Revelation chapter one. He has made us kings and priests unto God. So we are called to preach the gospel to every creature. So then faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Alright, so that's, that's very important uh, to understand. It really is. Alright, so here 
uh, when we are born of God, we are born of the Spirit of God. And uh, we have everlasting life. We are sealed, secure, sanctified, saved forever. Right? Remember what that, that verse I shared with you earlier? The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. See the spirit quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Right? The letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. This in no way is saying don't believe the Bible. Does not say that. I mean really that's as close as you get to echoing exactly what the serpent said to Eve when you say the scripture should not be read literally I mean that's insanity that is delusional and of course the Bible tells us exactly that that would happen and that there would come in the last days scoffers and mockers walking after their own lust everything we see happening today was already told to us in the Bible it's amazing alright so uh, I think there was one more probably one more point that I, I don't remember that I wanted to share with you but I think that's about it see we are called to preach the gospel right called to preach the gospel to everybody and of course the the Word of God is God and um, I apologize here so I think that's good enough I think we're gonna close it on that if you if you read 2nd Corinthians 3 I mean come on man but if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of, of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excels. Uh, <clears throat> there's nothing in here that says don't read the Bible. Nothing at all. Um, there was one more verse that I wanted to share with you. This is not it. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith but after that faith has come we are no longer under a schoolmaster I, I got it. All right. so there's several places here in 1st Peter chapter 1 the word of the Lord endures forever alright so the idea that the Bible's not meant to be read literally contradicts everything that is in the Bible. All right, so let me go here. Let me start here. Um, For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then you got some clown telling you, no, don't read the Bible. Don't read it literally. I, I, could, I could see Satan saying that. I cannot see God saying, don't read the Bible. You dig? All right, and then... Uh, let's go. What is the heaven and earth password? You know this one? Password. You get a password to get into your your computer or your you know your iPhone or whatever. 
You got a, you got a secret password and nobody knows. What's the secret password for heaven and earth? Well, we notice here in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus says the very same thing. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So you can tell people not to read the Bible. doesn't matter. Because the words are never going away and like I shared with you before man cannot live on bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live right man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of God and of course I imagine if, you, if you're not a believer, you're not going to have any understanding whatsoever. Alright. The bread is the Word of God. Alright, so you, we read in Matthew 6, for example. Let's go this way. Give us this day our daily bread. Alright, oops, where are we at here? Give us this day our daily bread. Uh, I thought it said that right there right, right in front of my face give us this day our daily bread it's this is speaking of the Word of God the daily bread is the daily Word of God give us this day our daily bread and so when it says man cannot live by bread alone but by every word of God essentially saying man can't live by these three verses alone we got to have the entire Bible get it and of course Jesus is the Word of God you know that right so um, how do I find that verse how do I find that verse let's see how do I find that verse so the Jews then murmur at him because he said I am the bread which come which came down from heaven this is the bread which comes down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die talking about the Word of God Jesus is the manna from heaven the real manna the true manna from heaven Jesus is the bread that comes down from heaven Jesus is the Word of God and Jesus is the Spirit of God and Jesus is the Son of God he is the Christ the Savior of the world all right, and so we're, what am I looking for here? Oh, Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God. And then you got some bozo the clown saying, uh, the Bible says the Bible shouldn't be read literally. I mean, come on, man. It just it burns my butt a little bit, and so if I had a, not not that Eric's ever gonna bother, but if I if I had, could say one thing to him, and that would be, who can save your soul? I want I want him I would like to ask who's gonna save your soul, because he's gonna die just like the rest of us it is appointed unto man once to die so begs the question who can save your soul